torch that lights up the way to new liberations for other marriages around it. From the home must come the man or woman able to promote the changes needed in politics, in society, in the ways of justice. Changes that will not come about as long as home life opposes them. But it will be so easy once boys and girls are trained in the heart of each family to aspire not to have more, but to be more. Not to grab everything, but to give abundantly to others. They must be educated for love. Loving is what the family is all about. And loving means giving oneself, surrendering oneself to the well-being of all, and working for the common happiness. Loving is what a family is all about, he tells us, and I think loving is what a congregation is about, too. And I ask, do we love violence as our country does? Do we love war and occupation and oppression and national subjugation? Or do we follow Oscar? Do we follow Jesus? Are we willing to experience the violence of love? You remember our reading? We have never preached violence except the violence of love, the violence that we must do to ourselves to overcome our selfishness and, the, and such cruel inequalities among us. Not the violence of the sword, the violence of hatred, but the violence of love, of sisterhood and brotherhood, the violence that wills to beat weapons into sickles for work. Romero the prophet speaks truth to power, creates divisions among people, separates out the good and bad, the rich and poor, the oppressors and the oppressed. But Romero was more than just a prophet, he was a pastor. And in being a pastor, the Monsignor called all of his people to their best selves. He invited all, rich and poor, to work together to serve the poor. He called the whole church in Gilded Cathedral and Humble Parish to be faithful to their calling, to defeat the injustice of the world as it is in favor of the justice of a political and moral and spiritual realm that exists only in our hearts and minds and best hopes. And he invited them not to be limited by their perceptions of themselves. How shameful it is, he, think, he says, to think that people with no faith may be better than we and nearer to God's reign. I say, outside the limits of Catholicism, perhaps there is more faith, more holiness. We must not extinguish the spirit. The spirit is not the monopoly of a movement, even a Christian movement, or a hierarchy, or a priesthood, or a religious congregation. The spirit is free and wants men and women, whoever they are, to realize their vocation, to find the one who became flesh to save all of them. Yes, to save all, dear brothers and sisters. I know that some come to the cathedral who have no faith, who are, no, who are non-Christians. Let them be welcome. And if my message is saying something to them, I ask them to reflect in their inner consciousness, for I tell them, the reign of God is not far from you. The kingdom is in your heart. Seek it, and you will find it. These words are in the tradition of Jesus, of course, the one who was killed, but whose followers say is ever alive. Monsignor Romero killed, lives, too. And we know that truth that lets us proclaim presente each time a colleague, a comrade, a friend is lost. We, too, know the truth. Yes, Romero is with us, Jesus is with us, Sacco and Fancetti and all our heroes are with us and we know it is true because we know who we are and we know whose we are. We know to whom we belong. We belong to the generations that have given us life. We belong to our parents and our grandparents, our great-grandparents who raised us. They paved the way that we might walk where we are now. We belong to them. We belong to the generations that are to come, to our children, and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We live our lives today in the expectation that we will create more just systems for them 
so their lives will be easier and fuller than ours. We sacrifice now, we build stronger social systems now, stronger civic institutions, stronger congregations. We develop and cherish our church now so that the generations to come will have a better way to walk as they face the challenges of their day. We belong to each other. In congregations like this one in our greater liberal religious movement, in communities which offer a different way, a fuller way for us to be human in this complicated and self-contradictory world, we belong to each other in our families, where we find challenge and frustration, and on the good days, caring and inspiration and nurture and embrace. We belong to each other in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our state, in our nation. We belong to each other in the world. We belong to this, to, to one human family inhabiting one precious planet, breathing one spirit of life. This is the great story of our faith, that we may indeed have faith in humanity, in all of humanity, and in the possibility that life itself gives us. We live today and can love today because we know that we are one in our living, occasionally in our experience, and always in our best hope. Spring is nearly here. The flowers will peek through the snow outside my window, will grace the edges of my morning walk. Somewhere, humble people will find purpose with one another in walking together for peace and against injustice. We will walk with them and they will walk with us. On Easter morning, the women followers of Jesus will go to the Good Friday tomb of his death and find his body gone. They will believe that something new, something radical has happened. Jesus is raised in the hearts of those women. The community recommits itself to their teacher and to his example. Likewise, Monsignor Romero promised that his blood would be the seed of liberation in his country that if he were cut down, he would be raised up in his people. And so today, the largest, most organized, perhaps strongest left in Central America is in his country. They are like Easter, like springtime for all of us. Their hallelujah speaks to us. And we who have the task of turning around a rapacious, exploitative, imperialist culture of violence, their hallelujah helps us to walk the path that is, our, is before us, that we may shout back our hallelujah. Even for Jesus, even for Oscar, even for the Salvadorans, even for all of us, our walking will lead to spring. And spring will be ours too, as we belong to the flowers, and to the farmers, and to the faithful, to our parents, to our children, to each other. Let it be always so. Always let it be so.